Our next guest is the co-founder of Autism Speaks. He and his wife, Suzanne, established that organization in 2005 after their grandson was diagnosed with autism. But now, former chairman of NBC, Bob Wright, is taking on a new fight against pancreatic cancer after the death of his wife this summer. And Bob Wright joins us now. Bob, nice to see you. Thank you, Allison. Gosh, I know what a heartbreaking time that you've had. Suzanne was a wonderful lively, spirited, fantastic person. And I know that pancreatic cancer, which took her life, is such a cruel disease. And this has been a rough for you. Well, it, it, it's, uh, Allison, I feel like uh, an investigative reporter. Uh, and I've been on the investigation of, of pancreatic cancer now for 13 months. Nine months of it was uh, during her life as a pancreatic cancer patient. And the last four is, is after her death. And my, my report back is extremely harsh. What have you learned? I've learned that there's been no change in mortality rate for pancreatic cancer in 40 years. So that 93% of the people that have it die mostly in the first year. And this, this is, and yet we have no attention to this from the, from the NCI, which is the National Cancer Institute, from the NIH, and from Health and Human Services. These are the groups that have not been appropriately dealing with this horrible killer. This is the third largest killer of, 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 of cancer. Yes, patients. and when people get this diagnosis, they do think of it as a death sentence because of those statistics that you've just laid out. So why hasn't this, I mean, is it just that people have thrown up their hands and they think there's no way to cure this? Why hasn't it gotten the well, attention? Well, you know, it's, it's ironic, but, but I, I, the, my, my book is devoted to management. And the, the tenets of, that ha, aren't here is there's, you need leadership, you need prioritization, and you need urgency. If you're going to succeed, any kind of an organization is going to run into problems, whether it's not-for-profit or for-profit. And, and the, a large organizations, when there's a serious problem, people have to mass quickly. They need leadership on it. They have to prioritize what kind of, what, what do I have available? Can I use? How can I put it all together to deal with this? And lastly, they have to do it immediately. That does, that has not happened in the case of pancreatic cancer. And it's, it's so, it's just a real management failure. And you and Suzanne are, are people who, when faced with a hardship, you are action-oriented doers. Autism, another untenable problem for so many families, but you seized it and you started Autism Speaks. What is your plan to tackle pancreatic cancer? Well, well I learned a lot with Autism Speaks, and if I had to do some things over again, it would probably be a, a, a little harsher in many respects on the same issues. Um, in that case, there was a denial in the medical community about autism. Some people were in it, some people weren't. It was, it was controversial. A denial that autism existed? Existed, right, right, right. Well, we got past all that. And then the question was, the, the medical profession said, well, we don't have the tools to, now that we don't have the tools, so we're going to have to pass it on to uh, specialists, neurologists and psychiatrists who are over, done, not, there aren't enough of them to deal with that issue. So we ended up, you know, going, and we raised tons of money at the federal government level. And I, but I wish I could say honestly that, that 40% of, of $3 billion, that's how much we raised, I wish, 40, 40, I, wish I could tell you 40% was truly ascent, uh, done properly, used properly. Huh. It's not about how much money you, you use in, in medicine and science or work, it's how it's being spent. And is that your plan for pancreatic cancer? Where do you begin? Well, my, we be, I begin with the facts. This, is, this, this, this fact sheet is, it's, it's like, a, I, you know, I was a lawyer. I was a lawyer for many years. It's, it's just like you go into the, to the judge and say, I, I wanted to, th this trial is already over. Here's the facts. I don't have to even read them. Just you read them. Yeah, and they are different. So it's like, how did this happen? It, it's, it's too hard to answer that question, but it's happening every day. There, there are five people an hour that die from pancreatic cancer, 117 a day, 3,500 a month, you know, uh, 43,000 people a year. It's just unbelievable. Well, the numbers are dismal, and if anybody can get to the bottom of it and make some progress, it's you, Bob. Um, last, before we let you go, do you have the app? A little politics right now? Sure. Okay, you were Donald Trump's boss for a long time yeah. when you were at NBC, and yeah. he was on The Apprentice. What do you think he'll be like as a president? Well, you know, I was an early supporter of his, and, and, uh, and I, I, I told people, I said, I've worked with this man for many years, and all these things that you're seeing and worrying about, um, you know, I, I said, I wouldn't worry about that. 
he's uh, he I think he's going to do just just fine. But meaning all the things that people are worried about, his rhetoric, his fiery rhetoric, the things that the media takes literally, as we know, yeah. but, uh, but he doesn't necessarily mean literally, the feeling that some people feel as though they'll be marginalized under him. Why not worry about those? Well, I, you know, that we've already gone through that whole cycle, you know, and he, and he's, that he's there. Uh, that uh, he, is, he is a George Patton type individual. It's so funny, we keep hearing that analogy. But, but it's only it's only a part of it. Uh, he'll he is easily he will defer in the in in the in the face of facts that he didn't know or understand that are different. Um, he is he is so results oriented. And I think that's a great trait to have for elected official, but especially a president who really has power. But he doesn't have unlimited power. Everything has to go through Congress. So Which, he, of course, Republicans control right now, so he does have... But that doesn't mean they're going to all agree with everything he wants to do when he wants to do it. So he has to be very uh, cagey and, and very smart about how he does these things to get it done. The idea of, for instance, the carrier situation, I think that's a, that's a, that's a, a sign that he's, he's, he's willing to put himself into a situation right away. That was very common in the 1950s and the 60s, and presidents did get involved with steelworker things, coal mine issues and so forth. It's just not been the way recently. But, you know, that's just one incident. He can't, he can't fix all the manufacturing, but all of a sudden it's drawing attention. You have six or seven of those incidents. Maybe we'll get some attention uh, paid to manufacturing and ideas coming forward and people saying, I have an idea, you know, we retraining different things. I think that's symbolic. Well, it's great to get your take on it. You know him better than certainly most people. And Bob, thanks so much for being here to share, obviously, your loss about Suzanne and what you're going to do and how you're going to move well, forward. Well, it's, that it's will the, help a lot the name of, of the, It's the Suzanne Wright Foundation. I formed it, and, and the name of the campaign, it's, it's Code Purple, Suzanne. And Code Purple is a hospital term. When a hospital has a problem that they can't resolve, they go out to the medical community. It's like a three-alarm you know, three fire. 